On this week's episode, a big weekend for movie lovers. We have big blockbusters back in the theaters. We're also going over the September film releases. Also reacting to the new Weird Al Yankovic trailer, which looks hilarious. Casting calls, House of the Dragon, and Power of the Rings non-spoiler reviews. Really big episode. It's going to be so much fun. Here we go, guys. We're diving in. Let's just dive right, right into uh, National Cinema Day. National Cinema Day uh, was this Saturday, September 3rd, and that brought out uh, not only uh, great big blockbusters back to the movie theaters, but also great deals. Uh, mm-hmm. Many movie theaters across the nation selling $3 movie tickets. That's nice. unheard of. That's amazing. That is, well, it's unheard of since like 1990. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that is just fabulous. Um, you know, because it's so cost, it cost inhibitive, you know, nowadays the tickets are, have you gone to the movies in New York city, by the way? Never. It is like $20 a ticket when you go in like Manhattan. And I tried like going from one movie theater to another movie theater. It's like one is $18 and 50 cents. The other is $19. It's like, and then you've got to buy the drinks and everything on top of it. And you know, it's a pretty penny. It's a pretty penny. Yeah, I'm curious if the three dollar movie tickets was enough to bring back people to the movie theater who were still not sure about returning. Maybe mm-hmm. they were just not in a rush to see something that were that was coming out in in, in on screen. You know, waiting for it to come to the streaming services. So maybe the three dollar ticket was a good incentive to not only you know mm-hmm. get people back in the seats, but to convince them yeah. that movie theaters are the place to be to uh, watch some big big blockbusters and what better way to convince them of that but by putting some of the biggest most cinematic most awesome films back on the silver screen to lure them in Absolutely. So not only did we have E.T., the extraterrestrial, uh, make its way back to uh, IMAX theaters, but also Jaws on IMAX. Uh, incredible. I believe it was the, what is it? It's the, uh, I'm going to Google it really quick. I'm using my Google skills, but <laughs> the anniversary, um, because again, that's one of the top tier uh, movie, 45th uh, anniversary of mm-hmm. Jaws, right. uh, released June 20th, 1975. And so what better way to celebrate National Cinema Day than bringing that movie back? Mm-hmm. And uh, we actually had Richard Dreyfus, who played one of the main three characters uh, in that movie, uh, going on Twitter saying, quote, when they asked me to do Jaws, I said no. I said I wanted to watch it, but not have to shoot it. Eventually, I came to my senses. It only took a few weeks into production to realize that Steven was a genius, and he was going to change the world. And yeah, Jaws was officially like the first summer blockbuster. Uh, Mm -hmm. So it makes makes sense that we see it coming back for especially uh, National Cinema Day. Shot here in New England, shot off the coast of Martha's Vineyard. With that animatronic uh, shark that they had so much trouble with, um, famously. Um, But that's one of our local films. Like you said, one of the first ever summer blockbusters. And one of the great films uh, to get people back into the theaters here, especially in New England. But we've also got a much more recent blockbuster. We've got the super fun uh, Spider-Man version, right? (laughs) Yeah, Spider-Man No Way Home, the, quote, more fun stuff version with 11 minutes of bonus footage. Uh, So there was, uh, again, really one of the biggest films of, what was it, 2021 into 2022. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it made, I think, over $800 million at the box office. And so with this uh, (laughs) re-release, they are projecting that it will make an additional $6 million over the Labor Day weekend. Apparently, a lot of the best stuff that has been included, like the the bonus footage, footage doesn't change the story it's not like a director's cut but it just adds more fun scenes and so we see a lot more fun play between uh the three spider-men um toby mcguire andrew garfield and tom holland and so that trio you know they could just be you know reading a dictionary together (laughs) and it's hilarious and fun and so uh getting a lot of really uh, good feedback hearing that the extra material uh adds to the movie experience so you don't say 
I feel like more <laughs> movies need to do this. They forget that it's about the characters, that we need to see that interaction, to mm-hmm. to feel that, connect with that humanity part. So I I just love that. I can't wait to go out and uh, and see that. I'm going to add that to my list. I, I I really need to get out there and see that bonus material. Yeah, um, let us for let us know let us know what you think because um, not only is Spider Man No Way Home big, Jaws really big this weekend and this week, but also uh, Top Gun Maverick continues to soar course, at the box of office, continuing to make more and more money. And so I bet with the three dollar tickets, people were just going back if they had already seen it. Why not go back and watch it again on IMAX for just three bucks and yeah. so let us know what you uh watched if you did take advantage mm-hmm. of the deal maybe maybe you just wanted to see any of these movies again um i hope that they re- re-release more big blockbusters yeah i was gonna ask you james so what would you love to see back in the theaters so i would love to see uh back to the future uh, <laughs> one two and three yeah. uh that would be amazing to see on the big screen and also i was a little too young when it came out but jurassic park i watched it at oh, home yeah. on vhs and so mm-hmm. uh i know that they have in in years past recently you know released it for like a weekend or like a day showing i would love for them to bring that back for like a month because mm-hmm. i think that would that would be extraordinary to see on the on the big screen yeah i for me um you know they they periodically bring star wars back out of uh you know dust it off and put it yeah. back up there of course one of the greatest films you could possibly see in the movie theater but i would really love to see titanic Ooh, again that'd be I nice I, I i when that came out i had seen it like eight times in the theater <laughs> and just you know seeing leo and kate winslet you know in their prime and all of the beautiful things that um Ca- cameron uh, James Cameron, James yeah. Cameron uh, put to film there. I would love to see Titanic again. Yeah, I saw, I believe I saw Titanic in theaters uh, once, but I saw it on VHS, on that two VHS right, box set, right. over mm-hmm. and over and over again. And I'm pretty sure my, my family and I, we, we tore to shreds that VHS, uh, the tape from replaying it so many times. Uh, but that's such a great uh, movie to bring back. Exactly. No, great stuff. Well, if we're not going to go out and see one of the epic classics on the screen, what are some of the new things that are coming out in September that we can be so excited for? Yeah, so we have a, a pretty good list for September. I feel like this past couple of weeks, we didn't really see a big, you know, uh, a big movie come out. And so I was I was uh, waiting and hoping for a good one to, to release soon. And September looks pretty good. Uh, if you are a horror Halloween movie fan, uh, we have some several good ones. One called Barbarian, starring Georgina Campbell, Bill Skarsgård from It, and uh, Justin Long. Uh, This is about a woman staying at an Airbnb in Atlanta who discovers that the house she's renting is not what it seems. Uh, I watched the trailer. It looks pretty creepy. That's coming out on September 9th. Uh, We also have another one uh, called Speak No Evil. This is about a Danish family visiting a Dutch family that they met on holiday. Now, what was supposed to be an idyllic weekend slowly turns into an unraveling of, uh, of mystery as the Danes mm. try to stay polite in the face of unpleasantness. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, the description doesn't do the trailer justice. I would check out Speak No Evil. It gives you the creepy vibes. Mm-hmm. That's also coming out on September 9th. The one that I'm looking forward to the most, and I don't know if you have if this is what you were about to mention, was Hocus Pocus 2. So the the classic film uh, shot in New England, again, filmed in New England. Um, This time it was shot all across Rhode Island, um, in Providence, Newport, Lincoln. Hey, 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 we're all (laughs) part of the the New England family. Um, It bring back all of our, uh, you know, the classic leads. And it looks like so, so very much fun. Um, Hocus Pocus 2. Did you have a synopsis for that in front of you? Yeah, we have uh, Bette Midler, Kathy Najimy, mm-hmm. Sarah Jessica Parker reprising their roles as the Sanderson sisters right. who are brought to modern day Salem, quote unquote, by mm-hmm. uh, three young women who must figure out how to stop the child hungry witches from wrecking havoc on the world. Uh, so that oh one, my. yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. That, of course, as you said, coming out to Disney Plus. So that's a movie that I think they could also re-re- re-release in theaters, maybe like a month. 
uh, in theaters, especially for the Halloween, you know, spooky season, and then mm-hmm. release it to Disney, you know, closer to Halloween. Um, that's one thing that I think uh, would not be a bad move. Um, what also may not be a bad move is this comedy called Honk for Jesus, Save Your Soul. <laughs> uh, this yeah. stars uh, Regina Hall, a great, funny, hilarious actress, and Sterling K. Brown. Uh, this comes in uh, theaters and streaming services on Peacock uh, right now, actually, so you can watch this. Uh, this is about a larger-than-life mockumentary about a mega church gospel-preaching pastor and his wife in Atlanta, and they have to try to rebuild their congregation after facing a huge scandal. And so, um, pretty interesting. Okay. And um, so this is not in September, but something that's coming up shortly after uh, in November that is a big deal for our area is the um, Ryan Reynolds, Will Ferrell Christmas musical Spirited. It's coming out in November of 2022, uh, tentatively at this point. So it's a musical version of the Charles Dickens story uh, Scrooge. Starring Ryan Reynolds as Scrooge, this miserly misanthrope, they uh, describe him as, who is taken on a magical journey um, by Will Ferrell, who is one of the ghosts, and that was shot in and around Boston and all around Massachusetts. It is amazing. Um, It was shot in the South Shore Mall and in downtown Boston and all the surrounding towns. And it's two of the biggest comedians slash actors dancing and singing and they are really dancing and singing i I feel like we've been waiting a while for this because there's been so much like we've been getting so many updates during the production of it during post-production and now during now we're waiting for it to be released and it's coming out very soon Mm -hmm. and so this is like a movie that's been i don't know about you but locally i feel like there's a there's a hype for this uh, people want to see this because, you know, yeah. every week when they were filming, we saw pictures of people like living in the upper apartments, like shooting pictures, you know, looking downward on the set, you know, all these different, you know, shots and, and you know, you, the, the sightings of these celebrities around town. So I think this is a big movie that's uh, that's going to hit big uh, for the general for the local area, especially. But, you know, wherever you are, go check out go check out a uh, spirited. Awesome. Um, one, a couple other movies we'll go through really quick. Uh, Bros, starring uh, and written by Billy Eichner, following the story of two gay men with commitment problems as they try to build a relationship. That's coming out September 30th. Pinocchio, starring Tom Hanks, directed by Robert Zemeckis. That's coming to Disney Plus on See, September 8th. Anything uh, with Tom Hanks is amazing. So you know, you just you already have to go. There's, yeah, there's no to. choice. You have to go to your couch and put on <laughs> Disney Plus. <laughs> uh, David Bowie, a documentary called Moonage Daydream, is coming out exclusively to IMAX on September 16th uh, with un never before seen footage of uh, of the movie of the uh, I would say movie and music icon David Bowie and lastly The Woman King starring Viola Davis and John Boyega this is a, a historical epic inspired by true events that happened in the kingdom of Dahomey I'm hopefully hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly it was one of the most powerful states in Africa in the 18th and 19th centuries uh, it is coming to theaters on September 16th and I'm hoping to see a screener for this early which we will then give a uh, review for uh, mm-hmm. a- ahead of the release but september looking like a really good jam-packed month for for moviegoers Woo-hoo. we will see you there and uh there's one other if you are a fantasy fan <laughs> more specifically a daniel radcliffe fan um you know him as the boy harry potter but he has since spread his wings to so many different kinds of projects I like daniel and radcliffe. He's, yeah he's he's an artist he, he's not afraid to explore uh, different characters and emotions. And he's, you know, he's been all over and get really weird, super weird. <laughs> and uh, he's about to get weirder. <laughs> Yeah, so the new trailer for Weird, the Al Yankovic story uh, dropped recently, and I'm really anticipating this movie. Uh, There is one big downside that I will uh, talk about right after we react to the trailer. Uh, But if you're ready, we can go right into uh, the trailer for Weird, the Al Yankovic story in uh, three, two, and one. Put it in. (laughs) Already he looks amazing as this Weird Al. So they did good. a great job. Of people thinking I'm some kind of joke. Your dad and I agreed it would be best if you just stop being who you are and doing <laughs> the things you love. My whole life. 
all I wanted. No one believed in him. We found your son at a polka party. A polka party. <laughs> Just to make up new words to a song that already exists. Oh. Well, you should do that then. Open up a package of my banana. Dude, I've got chills. <laughs> <laughs> the untold true story. Every once in a great while, I can spot a talent that I know is the future of music. Oh my god, it's uh, Rain Wilson. This looks ridiculous and great. I love it's hard to pronounce. I'm just the serious, quote unquote, a bit. The seriousness Al of it. Yankovic. I love it. Weird Al has taken the world by storm. <laughs> do I know you? Madonna. I was wondering if you were going to do a parody of my song, Like a Virgin. I'm curious, is that song. Autobiographical. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is the it's more the fantastical part of it. <laughs> Maybe one creative genius that doesn't have a checkered past involving alcohol. That's the medicine. And drugs. <laughs> I think Madonna's a bad influence on you. What? No offense. I'm a train wreck. My parents wrote me off. I pushed away my band. You're all just a bunch of normals. I'm the weird one. You gotta take care of yourself. I saw in you something special. Because we know Weird Al lived a controversial life. The world. In front of all the billions of people watching around the world right now, all I want to say is be as weird as you want to be. Yeah! You will never find true happiness yeah! so you can truly accept who you are. Thank you. Oh, Al, you can't smoke in here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I totally deserve that. Okay, so... Okay, so a, a, a few quick takeaways from that. One, I love that actual Weird Al is is in the movie. He plays, like, that guy who plays the tape in the very beginning, and he's one of the guys seen in the, in the audience clapping. Mm -hmm. uh, also, this is clearly not a direct like <laughs> biography of weird al's life he yeah. is not known for i was gonna say i don't remember the whole madonna affair <laughs> madonna <laughs> drinking drugs uh bringing being brought back to life from a drug overdose or so burning this is people with cigarettes <laughs> burning people with cigarettes and so this is have you seen so have, you haven't seen the movie walk hard with uh, john c Riley? have you no so it's like a it's like a a play or a take on say uh, Johnny Cash's life. It's a parody of kind of that kind of yeah. like you know mimicking that, yeah. uh, but being so ridiculous like, and over the top. Like so, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. Yeah, kind yeah, of thing. The, yeah. This is giving yeah. me that and Walk Hard vibes. <laughs> so yeah. that's great. Uh, the biggest downside of this movie is that it's coming out not in theaters or not on any major streaming service. It's coming out on the Roku channel. What is oh, that? What, what, I, what is that even? What? Is that like... Okay. I, don't, I know there's Roku. <laughs> I didn't know there's a Roku channel. And this, okay. this should be coming out in theaters, I think. I would that love to see this. That is equally weird. That so. is very weird. Everything about this is weird. That's too weird uh, for yeah. my taste. And so unfortunately, unless you have Roku um, or, you know, not Roku that I recommend channel. this, but there are people that illegally download movies. It's surprising. Um, <laughs> yeah, you may have to just watch I, it. I'd um, never do that, James. What? Never, ever. And so that's the only big downside to this because this looks hilarious. Um, again, not taking itself seriously. And, of course, with Weird Al being a part of it in, in the production and producing of it, of course, uh, I, I love that they're doing these whimsical mm -hmm. and fantastical you know points in his career and life uh that yeah. may or may not have ever happened so okay i like that so, so i like the whole madonna roku. thing so you know <laughs> hey uh, roku is not that expensive right i guess not uh, can you subscribe to it for a month but don't you have to buy something and plug it into your tv i, I don't know how it works i don't know we'll figure yeah. it out <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out if you have roku review it well you, let us know what you think about uh weird al yeah. or weird the al yankovic story um, okay. Yeah. But until then, James, until then, 
look at all of these incredible projects we've been talking about. All Absolutely. these great movies that are on their way to, to you, whether at home or on the silver screen at the movie theater. And guess what? So many of them are shot right here. Right exactly. here in New England, right here in Massachusetts, and, you know, Rhode Island, and, you know, and all the surrounding states. So much so that we are called Hollywood East now. And every year we just have more and more and more projects. And we, at the Hub on Hollywood, want to get you in the next movie. We want you dancing with Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell. And, you know, and we want you hanging out with Bette Midler and all of them. Um, and Adam Sandler and all of these incredible eight list talents that are constantly here, constantly. So uh, we are going into our casting calls now. There's a bunch of big projects um, in process that are filming now that are looking for background extras. They're looking for anyone and everyone and lots of different random combinations of people. So here we go. Uh, the first one, um, Madam Web is filming right now. That is the Sony venture into the Spider-Verse. Um, that is through Kendall Cooper casting. If you want to be involved in some of the big action sequences that they are filming, um, you're going to want to go to KendallCooperCasting.com and sign up there. Um, anything that you've got, James? So we have Boston Casting. They are looking for a real or actual rather several real auctioneers for cool. a feature film that is shooting this fall. So if you are a real auctioneer, if you know anybody who's a real auctioneer in New England and uh, wants to be in a future, future film, uh, send the if you or they send uh, headshots, photos, resume, mm -hmm. bio, how long uh, you've been an auctioneer and your <laughs> contact information. Send that to Boston Casting Headshot and Resume at gmail.com. Pretty long. Boston mm -hmm. Casting Headshot and Resume at gmail.com with the subject uh, being auctioneer slash your name. This pays over a thousand bucks if you are cast. So, um, yeah, we need those fast talkers uh, out there. <laughs> those, those we big just sellers. go for one, going for two, going for three. Uh, sold, sold to James Rojas, the Star go. Wars collection of <laughs> Chewbacca's. I don't know. I'll take All right. it. <laughs> yes. Or, uh, What's this? What's the name of the one that you like? The TV show with the soup? No soup for you. Oh, Seinfeld. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll 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 that get you a bunch show, of Seinfeld, Seinfeld stuff yeah. at the auction. <laughs> no soup for you. That's no all I know. You. Okay, and Billy Dowd casting. We love Billy. Is looking for men and women over the age of eighteen for background extra work in a television series that is going to be working for several days in Massachusetts through mid November. Um, this is going to be a period piece, James. Uh, set in the 1930s, it's a psychological thriller at an all-girls boarding school in New Jersey. You need to be you ha uh, you need to be able to fit their uh, costume sizes. So you must be able to a have short hair for a 1930s look. B for women, you have to have uh, bust sizes within a certain range. Um, men jacket sizes within a certain range. So they're they're looking for people on the slimmer side. Um, and the younger side, short hair for women, cl uh, clean shaven for men, going to be shooting in Randolph. Well, wardrobe and fitting are going to be in Ran Randolph. Um, if this sounds like you or something you m uh, might be interested in, we want they want you to go to cpcasting.com slash I-T-A-B, as in boy, extras. So cpcasting.com slash I-T-A-B extras uh to sign up for that opportunity okay boston casting also looking for tall thin men with dark hair for a feature film uh this one also shooting in the fall paying over a thousand bucks they're looking for uh, men who are between six feet and six foot two uh that weigh around 110 pounds and 140 pounds so they are really going for that tall thin look uh, send your headshot photo, resume, bio, height, weight, and contact information to Boston Casting Headshot and Resume at gmail.com. In the subject line, put tall male slash your name. Okay, and that is all of the castings that we have for this week. Uh, always tune in. We've got some really interesting stuff. Last, last week, they were looking for... Um, Older gentlemen, extra wrinkles, uh, yeah, to wear a speedo for a commercial. So that's you know, 
across the gamut. It runs the gamut. Um, don't think, oh, I could never be in a movie because I don't look like Brad Pitt. I can't make it in a movie. Yes, yes you, can. you can. Yes, you can. So join the Hub on Hollywood for that. You can find us on all the social medias. Uh, listen to us on Spotify and YouTube. And please share this with anyone that you feel could fit these descriptions as well and help us get as many people as we can into the future projects shooting here in New yeah. England. Yeah, and it's super important, too, to help us out, uh, to get our word out and get the podcast out there, to leave us a good review. If you are on Spotify, there is a rating, so give us a five stars. We're also on, on YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment down below, uh, join the conversation. Uh, like Jamie said, we are on all the social medias, at Hub on Hollywood. And if you are a local actor, local uh, filmmaker in the New England region, go ahead and shoot us an email at hubonhollywood at gmail.com and we can see if we can book you on the show and, uh, and you know, promote yourself and, and talk about some of the work that you're working on. Uh, so yeah, join the Hub on Hollywood family. We are here for you and for the New England filmmakers. Um, now, speaking about some, uh, some other great shows and things, but not filmed in Massachusetts, uh, but recently started watching House of the Dragon, which is the prequel... For Game of Thrones. Uh, Jamie, were you a Game of Thrones fanatic? Yes. Um, Game of Thrones, uh, watching it from the very beginning, I almost didn't watch it after the first episode um, with all of the, the violence, the gore, the child attempted murder, the incest, but it grew on that, me. Yeah. It grew on <laughs> Once me. Once you get James. past all that. <laughs> Once you get past all of that, there are incredible 15 more seasons characters, of that. <laughs> incredible storytelling. Um, so we, we won't talk about the end of the last season at all, but everything else, uh, was, yes, I was a huge, huge, huge fan. So yeah. now we are getting a look at the precursor to that, which I'm actually surprised that it got made, um, James, because of the negative reaction to the, the very end of Game of Thrones. But now we're getting a look at the House of the Dragon. We're getting right. a look at the Targaryens and how that all began. And I think a lot of people were nervous like me. A lot of people were on the fence and tentative. Their, their hearts still hurt a little bit. But after watching the first episode, they were, again, all in. Um, I haven't seen it yet, James, but you have. So why don't you take us through it? <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, like, uh, like yourself, big Game of Thrones fan. And I watched through, um, I think maybe through seasons four and five. I fell off because life got busy. And uh, I was I actually bought the DVD box set. So I was waiting for the next batch and to, you know, just to watch it all and, and binge it as well. And then after the, the news of the final season being so horrendous that it kind of ruins the entire series, I was like, you know, what? I'm not in a big rush to finish Game of Thrones. And so when I heard that they were making House of the Dragon, I was not excited. I was not, you know, I was like, okay, they're milking this this uh, this IP for as much uh, as as it's worth. And so I, again, not something I was really looking forward to. But then I heard uh, there's a movie reviewer that I that I watch uh, very often named Dan Mer uh, Merle, and he talked about it and he said that he was surprised with how good it is. And so you know yeah. what? I I'll give it a chance. And so I gave it a chance. Um, I, I watched episodes one and two, episode three coming out this weekend. But uh, again, somebody who went in passively, not expecting much or hoping for much or not to get sucked in. Um, I was sucked in almost immediately. The House of the Dragon is such a good show with great acting. Acting. Again, like Game of Thrones, uh, great cast, great uh, visual effects, great storytelling, and I'm already hooked. I was hooked uh, already in by the by episode one uh, by by the time it finished, and uh, episode two picked up even stronger. I'm really looking forward to episode three. Uh, as you mentioned, this is the prequel, so this takes place 172 years before the birth of uh, da da Daenerys uh, Tar uh, Targaryen. Again, I'm 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 incredibly impressed uh, with how the series has started. I'm hooked, line and sinker, and uh, looking, for, looking forward to more. Okay. Well, that's good to hear that you are impressed. So I, we definitely want to give that a shot. Uh, my husband and I are planning on watching it on Monday when we have some babysitting help because we want to actually, you know, focus and enjoy um, it. So speaking of epic prequels because we have <laughs> they are running out of material james yeah. uh, so we went through the, the the game of thrones 
we went through Lord of the Rings, you know, back back in the day. Uh, and now we've got a prequel to the Lord of the Rings um, called The Rings of Power. I appreciate that you like, you know, what, what, what we were just talking about. However, with the Ring of po- the Rings of Power, I'm not sold. I'm not no. sold on it, James. I'm not. So I'm going to try to keep this non-spoiler. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this a non-spoiler review. But we are, uh, this show takes a look at the rise of Sauron in Middle Earth. Um, and we see the whole journey through the eyes of Galadriel. Um, later, the Lady of the Woods, if you are familiar with um, Lord of the Rings and that mythology. So we're learning a lot about the elves and the very beginnings of the earth. I thought that was very beautiful. And you see how the elves are immortal um, and they're carefree, living in Valinor. They don't even know what death is. So we follow Galadriel and the relationship she has with her older brother Finrod when evil first um, drives the elves to leave their homeland across the sundering seas and wage war in Middle-earth against the forces of Morgoth. And Sauron is his number two who goes into hiding and Galadriel takes up her brother's vow to hunt down Sauron and search the ends of Middle-earth for him. It's, you know, dramatic in the, in the right ways there. Um, the the problems come elsewhere in the show. So we also see Would the you say halflings. Elsewhere? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Elsewhere. No, I didn't actually. <laughs> and I wouldn't, but you would. That's fine. <laughs> I would. I love that. Yeah. So we also see the halflings. We see elven politics, which is not not what I want to see. So we get glimpses of storylines that I feel like would be way more interesting than what we're actually seeing at this point. But I'm only two episodes in, okay? We see the dwarves at their strongest, and I love the underground city and, um, and you know, the mirrors that bring in the light and how beautiful it is at their height. So you do get, you know, the pros are you do get that beautiful kind of, view of of middle earth and of you know the species that are there it does feel more primal it does feel like we are thousands of years in the past from you know the lord of the rings trilogies i'm interested in the story in general and how it fits in with the larger lore um but you know there's concern that the showrunners may not be sticking with the source material and that's worrying a lot of fans and so far the characters that they have introduced I'm not that I'm not in love with them. Yeah. I feel like everyone's a little bit too abrasive, a little too coarse. And okay, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very insensitive right now and I'm I'm sorry, but the elves are ugly, okay? They're they're <laughs> ugly, they're not elves are supposed to be beautiful, okay? And that I think is the now, only prerequisite. What That's makes the, them ugly? Is it is it the, the makeup? I know that. Yeah. Is it the makeup? <laughs> is it the actors that they picked? What, what is I it? I think it's the actors that they they picked. I think that they were going for very angular looks, but it just doesn't. It's not working for me. And I think that you know the beauty and the symmetry. That's the only prerequisite for being an elf. You know, tall, slender, beautiful. Orlando Bloom. Not skin color, okay? Because there are a lot of people that are being very racist (laughs) or being very um and that is is not even a part of the conversation nor should it be and those people should be just kicked to the curb that's not what i'm talking about here i'm just talking about facial symmetry you know tall beautiful slender whatever even that's insensitive of me but it's just it's not and also the elves are a little bit more abrasive and like i don't care about their politics and it's just it's kind of taking away from the mystique of the elves in the original series i i feel like it's making them a little bit too human yeah i feel like and they shouldn't be human they should be elven so the halflings are not curly headed and they're also rather abrasive and, and strange like i'm just not getting the endearing qualities that these species are supposed to like embody i'm not getting that that feeling and i'm not getting endeared to these characters so much and the 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 qualities of these characters and their personalities so much um not really there yet not really feeling it 
I, I hear the strengths are the visuals. Like it's yeah. beautiful, it's yeah. stunning. The the you know the design, the the world building of this looks beautiful and is phenomenal. It better be because they spent I think like half a billion dollars on this. Oof. But it's the characters that are lacking when it yes. comes to you know people identifying with a character or yeah. rooting for a character or connecting right. with a character right. I, I i hear the and like i guess the story as you mentioned the politics very slow there, there's not really uh, a clear story that's developing just yet they're introducing from what i've heard so many characters but none of them is is endearing or or right. likable enough to right. want to root for them at this point right exactly no and i think that that's that that is precisely exactly my feelings on that um, I feel like maybe Galadriel is is the one that I would connect with the most so far, and I, I, who I want to see succeed in some way. But even that, it's it's not. I'm not connecting with her as much as I would hope just yet. So hoping that that changes. Um, it's I think the story is ramping up a little bit now and developing very nicely. Like I said, you do get that very nice primal feeling that the world, the world is is newer and older. You know that we are back in thousands of years in time, and it's it's interesting in that way. And it's the story in general is interesting. So I just I want to see more character development for sure. Now, um, so so you will watch episode three. You can you plan to. At I this will time continue, continue watching the series? it. I will keep giving it a chance. Yes. Okay. <laughs> cool. Now, one thing uh, to end on a high on a little higher note. One thing that I am glad I gave a chance and I am really uh, surprisingly enjoying is uh, the latest uh, Marvel Disney Plus series, She Hulk. Uh, have you watched yeah. any episodes yet or anything? I have. Yes, I'm up to date on She Hulk. Yes. So I don't know about <laughs> you, but like for myself, Mrs. Uh, Miss Marvel. I liked how it started. I like uh, first of all, Miss Marvel. The cast is great. Uh, visually, it looks good. Just the mm-hmm. story. I, it, I I wasn't eager to see each episode when it came out. Like it, those were episodes that I was like, you know, I'll, I'll get to it when I get to it. I, if I pass a couple weeks and haven't seen any, I'll watch one and try to catch up or whatever. It, it wasn't a top priority for me. When She-Hulk was being promoted, I was like, okay, after Miss Marvel, I'm not so excited for this show either. But I'm actually pleasantly surprised with, with how much I am enjoying She-Hulk and how much I'm looking forward to each episode. And um, and so that is a, a pleasant surprise for me. Uh, She-Hulk, attorney at law, follows uh, the character Jennifer Walters, played by Tatiana Maslany. Uh, she is this lawyer who gets infected with her cousin, Bruce Banner's blood. And so she gains the powers of the Hulk. And mm-hmm. unlike Bruce, she's able to control her powers uh, much more easily. And so she's able to become right. Hulk, but keep her personality, keep her persona uh, as well. And unlike all these other superheroes or, or people who get thrust into the superhero spotlight, she doesn't want to be a superhero. She wants to continue being a, be lawyer, a lawyer and living her normal day-to-day life. Yeah. And this is definitely a funnier series than uh, previous uh, Disney Plus mm-hmm. series that we've seen, and um, and this last episode was pretty hilarious uh, with this um, Asgardian shapeshifter. Uh, uh, the case revolves around uh, she's being sued for impersonating Megan the Stallion <laughs> and like hustling this guy out of two hundred thousand dollars worth of goods. Yeah. And uh, the real rapper Megan the Stallion made a cameo in it, and um, I thought it was hilarious. I, again, I'm enjoying the show. Did you mm-hmm. hear the whole controversy regarding the She Hulk? twerk no no please enlighten me i need to know spoiler review not a big spoiler (laughs) but at the very end the end credits uh we see um the she hulk and megan the stallion uh she signs on as one of her new uh clients and so they have like this dance off in in her uh in her office and they're dancing to one of megan's songs and at, at one point they're both twerking and she hulk in her lawyer attorney suits and in you know she hulk form she twerks as well Again, mm-hmm. it's like a one, it's like a thirty-second, one minute after yeah. credit, post-credit yeah. scene. I thought it was funny. It, it was, it was ridiculous. It, it was, it was cute. And uh, but people are online, of course, again, I want to say the minority because for the vast majority, I think people think it's hilarious and it's funny, no big deal. But there are people saying, "Can you believe this is the this is what we've gone to? We this is what we've we've come to in the MCU? She Hulk twerking. Uh, this is such a low point for the MCU." And, you know, they uh, I point think it's to, a high point. Okay? I think it's a, yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> like, say it's a high point, but yeah. I would say it's definitely not a low point at all. 
Um, again, this character, uh, she breaks the third wall a lot. She is very goofy. She is very relatable and down to earth. Um, and trying to balance this superhero slash attorney mm-hmm. uh, life. And, um, you know, she's a goofy character. And so it makes sense that she is a huge mega fan of Megan Thee Stallion. And, yeah. and what, you know, what would you do if you're with your idol blasting their music you in your That's office? You're going to twerk, you're going to you dance, you're going to have fun with it. And so, again, there's like that con- you know, quote unquote controversy people saying, you know, <sighs> the MCU has lost its way. No. Calm down. It People hasn't lost its way. People just have no sense of humor. They have no sense of along. humor. It's like, <laughs> why does it need to be a serious thing? It's something yeah. that brings you joy, puts a smile on your face, and that you can just love. And it, So have fun with it. And I love that, you know, those are probably all men. Can you believe it's come yeah, to yeah. this? That oh, please. <laughs> please. Let so, us have some fun. So I think she might be the most relatable character so far. Very um, realistic, because yeah. Because she's, she's very much... I think supposed to embody the fans because what is what does she talk about like in the very first episode is Captain America a virgin like these are the conversations that fans are having at home yeah. and I think that they're they're really having fun with her because she is a comedic character because she is you know goofy and, and all of this so that they can just do whatever they want um, I, I forget the name of the, uh, the, the the directors and the showrunners for this but I do remember them uh reading that they talked about doing a lot of things in this show without asking permission because mm. they just want to have fun with it. Uh, and I, I dig that. <laughs> yeah. I dig that. And um, I, I can't wait to keep watching it. Not because of how it fits in with the greater right. MCU and what does it mean for the future of these characters and the next villain. and Because it's fun, James. Yeah. And we need to have more just pure dumb fun <laughs> yeah and and every week i also see the post people like criticizing the cgi work and i will admit like it's not super compared to like it, uh, one I, so you know the uncanny valley kind of look yeah, of like yeah. cgi and stuff so when you bit. see cgi hulk it looks very real looks very realistic and and something that you can imagine like being in the real world with she hulk she looks like just a large woman and so of course like any you know your brain's gonna automatically recognize that that looks weird that looks more off than than normal than seeing uh, like an imaginary hulk creature doing its thing you see this tall green woman so it stands out a little more like in your brain subconsciously and i will admit that yeah the cgi is not like the best uh, and you could say, yeah, there are some scenes that look a little clunky, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm able to look past that and just enjoy the show and just yeah. realize, like, yeah, this is what this She-Hulk would, this woman would look like if she grew an extra two <laughs> feet and was green and muscular and all this other stuff. Yeah. And I'm enjoying, again, so the CGI may not be the best, yeah. but... I'm, I can easily look past that and enjoy the fun of the, of the, of the show, uh, which I am. And so... I'm curious about what you folks think. Are you watching She-Hulk? Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, also, are you watching um, The Rings of Power? Also, House of the Dragon? Uh, comment down below. Uh, let us know what you think. Join the conversation. We are uh, at Hub on Hollywood on all the social medias. Um, and again, be sure to you know leave us a good rating on, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Anything mm-hmm. helps us get the word out about all these amazing casting calls that we have that either you, your friends, your family can sign up for and um, again maybe possibly dance with Will Ferrell and uh, Ryan Reynolds in the next big film shooting here in Massachusetts that's right so join us next week let us know uh, what you think we'll give you a shout out on the next episode Uh, what should we be talking about you can find us on YouTube anywhere that podcasts are heard on the social medias hang out with me and James and we will see you next week guys All right. For the Hub on Hollywood, I'm James. I'm Jamie. Bye. Bye.